Boat! A boat! The gods have given me a... In recent years, big actors like Chris Pratt, The Rock, and Margot Robbie are taking on roles in animated movies more and more. Actors and actresses perform for unseen audiences. You can see the appeal. Roll up to work in your pajamas and say a few lines into a microphone. Seems like a sweet gig, right? It actually takes months of training and sometimes years. And when I've worked with people that are on Broadway, and celebrities almost always, and these are actors, and almost always they'll say to me, I had no idea. So how exactly do actors prepare for animated roles? We went straight to the experts to find out. Hi, I'm Rudy Gaskin, CEO of the Society of Voice Arts and Sciences, here with my partner Joan to talk about all things voice acting. Joan and Rudy have been teaching their craft for over 25 years. We work with uh, Phil Lamar, who's, who's uh, the voice of, uh, one of the voices of Family Guy, and Nancy Cartwright, who's the voice of Bart Simpson. Your attention, please, your attention, please. I have an announcement to make. You wouldn't believe a 60-year-old woman is that uh, adolescent's voice, but she is, and she's extraordinary. But talent is only part of the equation. When it's just your voice doing all the work, you have to make sure that instrument is in tip-top shape. Voice coaches lead actors through a variety of exercises to optimize their vocal cords and condition their mouth muscles. Some of these are things you might expect, like controlling your breathing and learning to speak on the breath. Hi, how are you? Some of them are less expected, like the jaw, throat, and tongue warm-ups that actors do before they get in the booth. Most people, their tension is in their jaw. So I'm using these fingers to hold the jaw, not clench the jaw, but hold it. And I'm gonna take a diaphragmatic breath in. So if I go. Now I'm gonna do it on sound. It's key to have a relaxed, open, back of the throat, as opposed to a tense and fixed back of the throat, which means that sometimes the breath can't go out the mouth, so it has to go shoot out the nose. And that's when you get things like nasality. Nasal might actually work for certain characters. Of course I want to keep racing. This is my backyard. But in most roles, actors want to speak more deeply and roundly, so their voices can capture a fuller range of emotional expression. Out of curiosity, why wouldn't you want to marry me? Just, you know, again, purely for curiosity. The little dingy thing in the back is called the uvula. Most peoples are frozen and they are kind of stuck. So there's exercises like You'll hear voiceover people do that in abundance. And it's to exercise the uvula in the back so that it's almost like a punching bag the way it moves. Clever tongue twisters are another key part of actors' warm-up routines. What everyone knows is Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers. But there's a lot of tongue twisters that aren't necessarily long, but they really help nip in the bud certain pronunciations. Abominable abdominals, abominable abdominals, abominable abdominals, abominable abdominals. Kinky cookie, kinky cookie, kinky cookie. Lemon lime liniment, lemon lime liniment. 11 benevolent elephants, try it. 11 benevolent, I don't even think I even say that word normally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, why it, that's why it's in there. These exercises help to relieve tension. But even some seasoned actors will still get nervous once they hop in front of the mic. Their throat gets dry, their tongue gets dry. When you're talking, you have a, there's a lot of lip smacking. What I'll do is I will eat a green apple. The acids that give green apples their sour taste also can stimulate saliva production. This helps clean and moisten the mouth, reducing problems like lip smacking and mic clicks. Some people have the opposite problem. They produce too much saliva when they're worked up. So they sound like they're a little drunk, but they're nervous. Luckily, there's a quick fix for actors who hypersalivate in front of the mic. What I tell them to do is take coffee grinds, just a pinch, and put it underneath their tongue. And let it absorb. The coffee grinds aren't tasty. That, that is not good. 
but they do dry up excess saliva, minimizing the sound of a wet mouth. A unique problem arises in the booth when actors are pronouncing words beginning with P, B, D, G, or T. You're welcome, Batman. Besides, I knew the cops would let you go. Yes! <laughs> these sounds are called plosives. And that's up! It's these air vibrations that are the foundation of beatboxing. But not so much in voice acting. That burst of air is very loud and dramatic. One of the simplest ways to get rid of that, so if you have a pencil in front of your microphone and you're speaking, when you say something like P, P it gets stopped by the pencil. Contrary to what people might think, voice acting can actually be very physical. You can conduct yourself, much the way a, a symphony conductor works with an orchestra when he wants something legato and easy, and when he wants big motions. And you can do that with your hands and your, and your body. If I wanted to say, many moaning men, I want that to be legato and smooth and loving. So I can use my hands like a conductor and go, many moaning men. If I want it to be sharper, I say, many moaning men. So your voice follows your body. If I said, take a Superman pose, and now say, many moaning men making money, it changes. If I say, put your hands on the lectern and become the president, then it's going to change the way you speak. If I say, put your hands on your hip and start moving your head. Then all of a sudden, then now, yeah. you're getting down. And this often comes up in voice acting where the script is saying that you're at a baseball game, let's just say, and then there's atmosphere, you know, the fans are going crazy, but there's still dialogue happening, right? One of the things that we have to do is, we have to talk over, like as if there's a crowd there, but that's not yelling. It is talking over the crowd or the noise, right? So I was working with someone and they just kept yelling into the microphone. So I finally said to him, use your hands as if a wave was coming up and over. So that while you're saying the line, you're gonna say the line as if you're talking up and over. So when he finally did that, he was stunned. In live action films, the actors have sets, costumes, makeup, and practical effects to help them get into character. In animated films, actors have their imaginations. I'm becoming, I'm becoming, I am Batman. When you're working on a particular script, it may call for a certain mood. Maybe it starts off with, it's cold in here. And so, okay, so this is gonna be a cold experience. But you're in the booth, you don't have people with you, you don't have props, you don't have a real environment, and you have to create a lot. It was, oh, I was like, oh, this is easy until it was like, uh. <laughs> Lemon, lime, liniment. Lemon, lime, liniment. <laughs>